AMCO members voted to strike at Impala Platinum but did not give the company a 48-hour notice suggesting it, that it may be deterred. Meanwhile, SAB has turned to the Labour Court to bring an end to the intimidation as well as violence presented by action. Now, Michael Bahrain, who's a partner at Bahrain Attorneys, joins us now for more. Michael, let's just start off uh, taking a look at AMCO as well as their strike action at the likes of Impala Platinum and several other platinum mines in the country. Are they becoming a force to be reckoned with? Well, they certainly are. We know that they are, in fact, not becoming, but they are a force to be reckoned with. The nice thing is that we've had quite a watershed year. 2013 has been horrific for strikes in South Africa. But as I said, the nice thing is we're coming to the end of those strikes. Um, it's not so easy now for a union just to embark upon a strike and just to demand whatever they want to demand. I think the demands are now coming down. And also, it's not such a warm ocean to dive into. Uh, we're seeing government turning a, a jaundiced eye to strikers. Um, our Minister of Finance, our Reserve Bank, Trevor Manuel, the, a whole lot of very powerful individuals within the government are starting to say that the strikes are hurting us and it's not good. And I think Kosato itself is now divided as to whether this is the right form of action. So Amku are very careful before they just embark upon the strike. They've got the certificate. They could have given the 48 hours, but they haven't done it. And I think that's a good sign for us. Things are starting to look up for South Africa in the industrial relations sphere, despite the fact that we're all depressed about it. It is starting to look up. Michael, I've been talking with people in the mining industry, and there's a very interesting uh, conclusion that they've reached. Because of the money lenders and because of the high level of unsecured lending, strikes could be sustained for much longer. Now that people have, uh, even the money lenders won't lend to cars who go on strike, are they thinking three times before doing so? Yeah. Look, money lending is an awful experience for us in South Africa. Um, I, I think it was one of the biggest issues behind Marikana. And I also think that it's impoverished people beyond anyone's imagination. Uh, that needs to be more controlled. We need to step in. We need to have a look at it. In fact, government would be very well advised to try and clamp down as much as possible on the money lending and to go to the formal money lenders who don't get usurious about it. That being said, you're quite right. Many of the workers just can't afford not to get their daily salary. Uh, many of us are looking at this and saying, well, maybe there's something to it. My real issue is that money lending itself has created a lot of hardships, a lot of, a lot of people who are looking at this and saying, I, where do I turn to now? Because by the time I have my salary, I've already spent it all. Uh, it's a real problem in South Africa. So the mining industry is just one of the industries that's been affected by the money lending. My feeling is that the mining industry itself is a bit punch, punch drunk. The workers are saying, are we gaining anything extra by going on the strike? And many of the workers are now and also starting to understand that it takes them six to 12 months of working before they actually gain what they've lost out whilst they're on strike. Michael, we know that the Free Market Foundation recently took Parliament to court with regard to Section 32 of the Labour legislation. In your opinion, is this long overdue? It is long overdue. It's, it's about time someone had the guts to do it. Uh, one of the biggest problems is litigation in South Africa today cost a fortune. I, I, now I'm an attorney, so I, I know what it costs to litigate. And the Free Market, uh, thankfully, were able to get a, a donor, their, their chairman, to come forward and put money where his mouth is uh, and bless them. Uh, we need to test it. We need to see what's going on because unfortunately small business can't keep up with big business. And we all know that small business is the engine room for job creation. And if you're going to try and kill small business, then you're actually going to kill our economy. Um, so we've got to be very careful. And I think the Free Market Foundation are the sword bearers right in front of that fight. Um, this is not the end of it. I think this case is the start of public society standing up and saying, let's create jobs. We can't rely on government, and we can't rely on some negative legislation. You mentioned there that public society standing up against the strike action seems like corporate South Africa as well frustrated by this, because recently South African breweries also were going to the Labour Court uh, trying to bring an end to the violence as well as intimidation that they've experienced uh, regarding the strike action. Do you think it's, uh, f f corporate South Africa has become frustrated? Yes, I have, and it, it takes a big corporation like SAB to actually challenge 
uh, this problem. But there have been quite a few judgments in the last year. That's why I said this has been a watershed year for us. And so very exciting for labor lawyers, maybe not so exciting for the economy. But it's, there's been judgments recently where the unions have been found guilty of causing damages and they've had to pay back some of these damages. There's the one about the security guards here in Cape Town that you saw. And then we've also seen that the unions are now under the whip even from their own members who are getting sued. So SAB, yes, they've done the correct thing. They don't have to take illegal behavior during a legal strike. And I strongly believe they're going to be very successful in their case. And they're going to lead the way for other corporations to stay the same thing. We're not going to take this anymore. So it looks like civil society, corporate society, and even government are looking at it. So we no longer do we have the lone voice, the DA and parliament, shouting that this is not good for our economy. I think everyone's joining hands with them.